All right, guys. So like I said, we're going to go over the introduction to problem solving and introductory chemistry. This is probably the most important skill that you will develop this uh, in this class. Bottom line, if you can't do problem solving, you're not going to pass. And I'm not trying to be dramatic. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just being truthful that this is a problem solving class. We problem solve in one particular way, or we're, we're approaching one particular set of problems. And if you learn how to do problem solving and you're in good shape, if you never learn how to do it, you're, you're not gonna be able to answer the questions on the exams in the final. There are multiple ways to do problem solving. There are lots of ways to do problem solving. I'm going to do it the same way every time so that it's completely consistent within the experience of this particular course. You may have other instructors or other, you may encounter other videos. You may have friends and relatives that have taken classes like these before that may have slightly different approaches or completely different approaches to problem solving that get you the same answers. And at the end of the day, you have to pick the way that works for you. But I believe this is the way that works for the majority of students. And because it was, it's imperative to be consistent in order to avoid introducing any extra confusion, I'm gonna stick with this way. And so what I wanna do is I wanna go back to my screen sharing and sort of set up a problem or two. And so let's start off with a problem like this. Convert 3.25 kilometers to meters. It's a simple enough question. Convert 3.25 kilometers, convert that to meters. I'm gonna develop a problem solving method that I'll use essentially for the rest of the semester. Today, it might seem overly complicated to answer such a simple question, but at the end of the day, you can apply this same problem solving method to, to essentially every problem with very few exceptions in the course. And so let's talk about that problem solving method at this point. The method involves three specific steps. And I'm gonna go ahead and write down the numbers one, two, three, to describe these steps. And I'm gonna actually write down what I'm doing in these steps for the first problem so that uh, you have that in your notes. So the first step is to W-R-I-T-E, I'm sorry, I spelled terribly, write down what you are given. The information in the problem. The problem, the problem in the problem solving, any of these questions, they'll always have some piece of information that you can consider as being given. It might be multiple pieces of information. The point of this part of the problem solving method is to write down all of the information that you're given to sort of organize it. And so, in other words, what are you given in this question? There's one thing that you're given. You're given 3.25 kilometers. That's really all you're given. That's the information that you're given to solve the problem. The next part, the second step, step two, is to write down what you are asked for. What is the problem telling you to do. 
I want to be specific here. And this part is sometimes hard for students. The units are really the key. If I were to say, what am I given in step number one, there's two pieces of information that I've written down. I've written down 3.25 and I've written down kilometers. Let's think about it and let's find out which one of those pieces of information is actually the most important. If I said I was given 3.25, does that seem more important than saying I was given kilometers? Think about that for a second and we'll, when we get to the second part, we'll try to put all that together. Well, what, that, what am I asked for in this case? Well, I'm asked to convert to meters. What am I asked for? I'm asked for meters. And so why am I spending some time talking about these red units? Because the units, in my opinion, really are the important pieces of information in these two steps. What are you given? Well, you're given kilometers. Sure, you're given 3.25. You're given a particular amount of kilometers. But at the end of the day, the heart of the question is saying, convert kilometers to meters. The actual thing that you're doing in the chemistry course is convert in this particular problem is converting kilometers to meters. It's somewhat arbitrary how many kilometers you're being you're converting to meters. So what is the really the important thing? It's the units. All of our problem solving will revolve around units. And this is really hard. I can remember back when I took chemistry in high school, it was so hard for me. I failed it in high school completely. It was hard for me to wrap my head around the idea that the units are important and that the units really are what's going on in chemistry problem solving. So the first step, write down what you're given. Really, I'm writing down the units. What is it that I'm given? I'm given kilometers. Then I write down what I'm asked for. Really, it's about the units. What am I asked for? I'm asked for meters. I'm given kilometers. I'm asked for meters. Okay, now comes the actual chemistry part. Step three. And step three is the conceptual planning. What's the concept plan? How are you actually going to solve the problem? Now, there's, there's actually two parts to this. A. A is the basic plan. And the basic plan, the basic plan is always the units in step number one with an arrow to the units in step number two. So how would I do this? What is this basic plan? Well, what are the units in one? The units in one are kilometers. And I'm going to do what? I'm going to change kilometers. That's what the arrow means. I'm going to change it. I'm going to convert it. I'm going to convert kilometers to meters. Now, in this case, the next part of the, of the next part of the planning, this is actually the hard part of the course, is coming up with a step by step plan. You know that you are mastering this content when step-by-step -step plans start to come somewhat naturally for you. When you start to see the individual connections between units. Now, in this particular case, the step-by-step -step plan 
is also the basic plan in this particular case. And the reason is uh, I have a direct relationship between kilometers and meters. So the basic plan is a series of direct relationships. And as we learned in the last lecture, we can write a direct relationship between kilometers and meters. And so here's my whole problem solving plan. I'm gonna to try to shrink it down just a little bit, but I want it to still be legible. And so I want to start to solve the problem. All right, what am I asked for? I'm asked for, uh, meters. So that's step number two. What am I given? Step number one was kilometers. How do I put together a concept plan? Well, the basic plan is fairly straightforward. It's the units in one to the units in two every time. The problem is, is sometimes there's not a direct relationship between those two units and your step-by-step -step plan gets longer and longer and longer involving series of, second, of multiple steps. In this particular case, there is a direct relationship between the units in one and the units in two. And this goes back to our metric prefixes. Remember, a relationship is at its heart is an equality. What a relationship is one thing equals something else. And I taught you last time how to write a relationship between two units as long as one of the units is the base unit. In this case, we're in the uh, measurement of length. The base unit for length is, is meter. So the prefix unit is kilometer. Now, you may or may not have these things memorized, but at the end of the day, you do have to memorize these definitions. But let's talk about how do I make sure that my relationship is correct? Because not only does it have to be a series of direct relationships, if your equality or your relationship is not true, then you're not solving the problem. The relationships have to be true. So how do you solve this? Or how do you write a, a, a true relationship between kilometers and meters? Well, for in metric prefixes, if you do it this way every time, it'll always be true. We take the definition of the prefix. And what's the definition of, kilom of kilo? it's 10 to the third. And when we have the definition, it belongs on one side of the equality. Where does the definition go? It always goes with the base unit. So I'm gonna say this several times in all of our problem solving. I'm gonna say, where does it go? It goes with the base unit. So in order to make it true, it's one. Now, I'm going to start, I want, I want to, I'm, I'm just introducing the problem solving method. And so I'm going to get to the solution pretty quick. Now that I've written a relationship, I can write a per expression. And a per expression is just a fraction based on the equality. What I mean by that is that one kilometer is the same as 10 to the third meters, or I could say 10 to the third meters is the same as one kilometer. So there's one kilometer per 10 to the third meters, or I could say there's 10 to the third meters per one kilometer. And so now my job is to put it together. I'm going to put it together with my basic plan, kilometers to meters. Each step, each arrow in my basic plan represents one of these per expressions. And so what I want to do is I want to pick the per expression that will cancel out the units. And we'll talk more about this next time. But I have the unit of kilometer in the numerator here. And I want meters in the numerator of my answer. So that means that in order to cancel kilometers, it must appear in the denominator of my per expression 
and in order to get meters, it must appear in the numerator. So that means this is the per expression I want to use. You could eventually use this per expression in another problem, but not in this one. The rest is putting the numbers in place the way they are in the per expression that you wrote down. So now the rest is just, so now that we've done the problem, all that we have to do now is use our calculator. 3.25 times 10 to the third. And we get 3,250 meters. And so that's the solution to that problem.